Hey guys, how you doing? All right, we're on the uh, Husqvarna YTH22 V42, and uh, I'm gonna show you how I buff stuff out uh, my machine. The machines I sell, um, it's jacked up in the back because there's something I need to show you guys. It comes with. An apology. Hang on a second. I got to get you in a little holder here. All right. So when in the last video the uh, changing of the drive belt, when I did that video, I kind of seen something that didn't look right, and I'd figure I'd come back later and. Uh, look at it after I was done filming and discovered you can't really you couldn't see anything on this side at all um, it could only see that only reason I noticed because I was underneath doing the belt and the frame didn't look right on the other side here and of course I got everything fastened in back in now but there's a bracket right here that goes down, see it right there, connects to uh, the hydro, the hydrostatic axle, drive axle, to, uh, you know, this is a stabilizer bracket, and uh, then it's got another bracket up here that attaches to your deck lift. So then they're pretty much right on top of each other. I'm sorry I got all the wires back in place. Um, zip tied and everything. So, But what it was, on the other side of these two brackets, the frame was completely cracked in half. Totally. And uh, I know one of my viewers, subscribers, and I am subscribed to him, Mike, from uh, Grampy's workshop if you're not subscribed to him you should be because he's does all kinds of different things uh really great guy good videos top notch um but he has a husqvarna similar to this one different engine and all that but basically the same so mike this goes to you you may want to check out your frame back here because this frame is ridiculously thin I, I couldn't believe how thin it was. And with all the holes in it here for the bracketry and, and, and all the other holes that they put in there for no apparent reason whatsoever, um, there wasn't a lot of meat there to begin with. So that's why it cracked in half. So uh, something for you to go look for on your own there, uh, there Mike. Uh, just a heads up. But anyway... Uh, so I was filming, I did film the whole process, well, I welded and uh, all that, and explained it all in the video, and while going through, there's stuff I have to delete, you know, old videos out of my memory, and, and uh, other ones. I have to get rid of so I mistakenly deleted it which upset me pretty bad but what do you do so it was already all done I don't like I could redo it um, but what I was explaining in the video is I wasn't sure how I was gonna weld it because like all these brackets have to go here right and I couldn't really weld on the other side it's like an upside down L. The little frame comes up here and then goes straight down. There's a little tiny lip down here on the bottom. So I thought, why not just weld this, this stabilizer bracket right to the frame, which is what I did. And then I continued to weld the, the frame up this way behind this bracket and because this one's got a little little give in it, 
because it does stick out a little bit on this side and uh, which is all okay everything all works everything is uh, up to snuff there so if you have one of these machines like Mike you, you guys may want to pay attention to that area I've never seen it happen before on another riding more I've had to deal with cracks up by the engines and stuff you know where all the vibration is but I've never seen one crack back here it's just crazy but again this frame is stupid thin it I don't know why they I mean I know it's a light duty tractor but gee whiz I was afraid I was gonna burn through it you know I had to turn my heat down and everything um, so anyway that's just one thing and then I'm going to show you just how to buff this faded paint out so hang on alright guys um, so we're going to get to the buffing now buffing out of the paint I already did this side which looks pretty good this side's nice and dull you can see the glare there how it's, it's minimal I mean it's not going to be you know like showroom perfect because this paint is actually in pretty bad shape um, now yeah it's nighttime it's a uh, quarter after nine at night and it was a pretty warm day today the only warm day we've had in weeks and it shot up to like 90 <laughs> that's Fahrenheit and then it's gonna get cold again now so I don't know it's a crazy weather anyway about it so I used to have a attachment on my drill a little, little buff pad on it and I do these and and it worked you know it worked pretty good for you know it's not like I need a great big thing to do all this but it, uh, so I bought this, just this cheap old little buffer at Harbor Freight. And uh, first time I used it on this, on the other side of the hood there. And uh, I think it works pretty good. You know? So, and then I just use a buffing compound. You can use anything you want. a couple of dabs or one big one I guess whatever it lets you do I'm trying not to get it all splattered everywhere but it's doing it anyway and it's fairly quiet And this is just a microfiber uh, towel.
Wow, this side really, really came to life. And then, after that, I just hit it with this little bit of spray wax. Now these letters on here are raised, just glued on I think, and your wax or your buffing compound will get in here and uh, sometimes it can be tricky to get out. I kind of try to stay away from it, but a lot of times what you can do is just take a toothbrush to get that stuff. Splatters all over the plastic. Try to get that. So. Could almost go over it again. And then you'll see like, hang on. Sorry, you're bobbing all over the place. Like, see how the buffing compound got in the plastic here a little bit? Just take a, like a brass brush. Kind of get that stuff out of there. So, let's go and get you set up. In the back area here it's a little dimmer back here the lighting so well you guys noticed the seat I put on here because the other seat was so tore up this one's a low back seat but I didn't have I had another Husqvarna seat but it was too much like this, so it felt like you're sliding off all the time. The one that was on here was kind of, you know, made you sit like this. This one's kind of that way too. It's better than the Husqvarna seat was, um, but I don't like that. It's so small, but it is what it is, you know. I'll give them the old seat when they buy it and say, well, if you want to order a cover, you know, you can do that. So, but. This one works for now. I got the chain hoist chain right in my way. So a lot of times I just take window cleaner or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Just give it a quick wipe down. gadgetry in the way might make it a little tougher see this is why the one on the drill is a little more handy because you're able to get it in these little areas and stuff so actually I might have to do that Dolled up, dolled pretty good.
You know, sometimes you can only do so much, but I mean, if you compare shadows that side to this side, you can tell it looks better. So, comments between comments and a uh, a potential buyer for that big husk barn that I had said it's the fifth and sixth number of the serial number so it's 16 it is 2016 so there you go um yeah maybe from back here you can kind of tell different sides not bad Okay, uh, so for this machine, I bought for 200 we're going to say, I had $50 in parts, that's new blades, and, you know, the oil filter, oil and air filter, all that stuff. And I'm going to ask 650. Don't know what I'll get. Sometimes they try to talk you down. The big husk of varnish sold. And I did get $1,200 for it. So that's a good thing. Now. He had something he was selling and for 200 bucks and I couldn't hardly say no. It's this little guy here. So, I don't know, maybe I'll do a separate video on it, but it, I don't know when I'm gonna get to it. It's got speedometer, it's got gauges, uh, nice little headlights, it's got turn signals. Full suspension. It's uh, it's craziness. It's got a tail light. <laughs> now it's pretty dark back here, but I should pull it up. Kind of where it's a little more light. So I want to show you something. This. is the original engine imagine it sat like that now he put that Briggs in there and he put a monstrous monstrous chain <laughs> in there the thing is I think this back sprocket is way too small it barely gets you going that's why he was selling it because the you know these little engines they pretty high rpm and if you ever see a mini bike the sprocket is pretty near as you know as big as the rim so i think we need to change that sprocket or i'm going to put the original engine back in supposedly it runs it's got great compression um he said the carburetor was, you know, bad or need whatever. And so I think I can get it going. And so it's got the built-in transmission, which is pretty cool. And here's the really odd thing. This part here, where the, uh, you know, the these pull ropes are normally in here. This is an electric starter. Here's your cable for it right here. So it's got electric start, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know how they do that, but so, but he's got everything kind of squirreled up in here, and I don't know what it's going to take to get it back to the original engine. You know, if I change out the 
the chain and sprockets, I'm going to have to change both sprockets because it had, you know, the, usually the sprockets that go on here are big, not maybe as big as this other one is. But, uh, you know, because I think that's like a number 40 or something chain. It's pretty big. So the little gas tank for the original engine is under here. Just a little plastic deal. And uh, the battery, I haven't, I got to get it out of there to get it charged, but it, it's charged now. It's got a, <laughs> a little horn and uh, the blinkers all work. It's, it's crazy. So for 200 bucks, I couldn't say no. So really, you know, I got a thousand dollars for the big the big Husqvarna. But look at that air filter, huh? Pretty snazzy. <laughs> yeah, I see he's got stuff chopped out of here and I don't know what it's gonna take to get that original engine back in there. It's got a rear disc, but the uh, caliper is gone. The front brake is still intact. So that's really your only stopping power. I can see the gauges now. So this is your bolt and gas gauge. I don't know if, you know, I haven't had this out, so I don't know if it works or what, but the gas tank. Anyway, kind of went off the beaten path here, but, um, Suppose we could see if I still gotta finish. I'm gonna finish buffing it out and everything. Trying to get rid of these tar marks or whatever that is in there. Off camera. There's bugs flying around now. So Anyway, guys, with that, oh, I should show you something else. I know it, this never stops with me, does it? Just when you think Ackerman's going to shut up, he keeps going on going. So this has the new, remember on the, on the big Husqvarna, I was complaining about the air filter, you know, on that whole design crappy design they got on there they finally had upgraded you know made it better so they do this kind of thing now which is way 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 better so you guys want to sit here and watch me do that <laughs> anyway guys Thanks for joining me, and uh, probably get back to you when I finish this one up, or when it's sold, and I'll come back and tell you what I got for it. Oh, and then, well, anyway. Thanks, guys. Bye.